Here's something that I'm working on right now. This is a replication of one of Tesla's patents. I don't have the patent number handy right now, but if I find it, I will add it to the description or the comments. And basically the way it works is you have an outer conductive container. Um, I used these copper pipe pieces. And I created this cylinder, which I then filled by cutting wires that were long enough to reach all the way down to the bottom. I cut 64 in total for this one, and right now they're just loosely joined together on the top. Um, I have to figure out a better way to secure the electrode. So according to the patent, this is one of the electrodes, and this is one of the electrodes. Um, and this is also supposed to be filled with salt water, the container itself, so that the conductor, the outer conductor, actually is extended through the salt water in between all the individual wires. Um, I haven't done that yet, and I'm still, I've still built a decent variable capacitor, and it should be quite high voltage. Um, it's not very big. It's uh, on the order of 40 or 60 picofarads. Yeah, so 47 is the max, and if I pull out the wires a little bit, <clears throat> then you can see that I have a nice high voltage adjustable capacitor. And let me just pull it out, see what its theoretical minimum approximately is. So that can be adjusted pretty uh, pretty accurately from from about 20 picofarads to 40 picofarads. And the way that I sealed the bottom of these this bundle of wires, which is one of the electrodes, is with this liquid tape stuff that I got down from the car uh, car parts store and it's just brush on electrical insulation and it worked out really great um, I'm definitely interested to see what happens when I add the salt water if that increases the capacity but already um, this is nice because it's a very high voltage variable capacitor. And according to this meter, it doesn't have very good Q. Seven point eight. I think that's really low. I'm not really sure. Um, I'm trying to figure out what makes for a high Q capacitor. I was hoping that this design would have a high Q, but obviously it's not high enough quality construction or something. Um, anyway, so yeah, you can see that this time when I pushed it down, I now I pushed it a little further and I have a maximum capacity of 52 picofarads. When I touch it, the capacitance jumps way up. But if I just pull it out here a little, it really does have very good resolution. Be able to make very precise changes. I'm holding the masking tape while I'm moving it so that it doesn't jump around.
That's great. And here's another one. I got this compressor adapter. It goes from one inch to three quarters, I guess. Um, and I just got a one inch cap and stuck that on there. And this one, it's tough to get a read off because I don't have a good place to make a connection to the other electrode, but if I just make a connection here. This one's four microfarads. It jumps around a lot more as the connection I'm holding it on, holding the meter onto the plate changes. Yeah, so I think it seems to think this one's about three microfarads. I don't know, it's, it jumps around so much it's hard to tell. Anyway, I will look for the patent number and post a reference to the patent. But this is a really great way to build a high voltage variable capacitor and it's pretty easy. Copper is kind of expensive right now. Um, this is definitely a really good construction technique. I like this one the best. Um, and these pieces aren't as expensive. This is just a couple of bucks here. So I highly recommend trying this out.